Hello there, good morning and welcome once again to my little arty corner of YouTube. My name's Angela and I'm an artist most known for my colouring books including Colour Me Calm or the, and the other books in the Colour Me series done with Lacey Mucklow and also plenty of books for the Creative Haven series of colouring books from Dover. Um, the last one out was Whimsical Cats. Um, Adorable Dogs is due out soon, but the very first one I did for that series was called Entangled. And um, I just love to draw. And I draw lots of things, but often things that catch my attention. Um, generally not. I don't do people. I do cute and whimsical. So it's lovely to have you join me here on this Tuesday morning. It is the 29th of March. And um, I'm going to carry on from my previous video which was about um, mushrooms, how to draw mushrooms. I've got a few other ideas for drawing mushrooms today and um, some ideas for adding interest to them once you've added colour. But I'll come back to that in a while. So I hope you're all doing fine and well and that, you know, everything is all well in your world. I've got a couple of different pens out today. I've got this um, brush sign pen pigment from uh, Pentel, I've got an 01 Sakura Pigma Micron and I've got a hard Tombow Fujinosuke pen. Hard means the, the tip, the flexible tip is um, hard. It's less flexible than the soft version, a lot less flexible, especially if that's an old one and it may or may not work for me. So with no further ado, let's have a look at some mushrooms here. Um, I'm going to look at some that may be a little bit different to what we did yesterday and perhaps some that might end up looking quite similar. And I'm going to give myself some ground today. So I didn't do that yesterday. I'm not going to do sides and above, I just want some ground for the stems to grow out of. So here I've got a wavy kind of stem and I am going to draw kind of oval shape um, around it and I'll come back and do something with that and here I'm going to draw quite a nice domed shape there and with a finer pen it's probably the Tombow because I think this one no perhaps not this one I'll have a look and see whether it can get a finer line out of it the problem with all these flexible pens is eventually they wear down and with my micron, I'm going to pop in here all the gills. Um, so they, they would appear to come from a point up here somewhere. I'm not quite sure where this would end, but if we imagine it here, so they would all come from that point really, or more or less the place where this meets. And this is why I've got a couple of different thicknesses of pens out today to give some variation to my lines. And here, I don't know if you can see, I've actually got that one as if it's going towards the edge of this here as it, it comes around. The black outline is very bold and I'm going to play on that by increasing the boldness of where I want a bit more shadow, which for me is always or nearly always the bottom and the left. And I'll do the same along the stem. So I could have done a slightly thinner pen, but we're going to go nice and bold today because it's a Tuesday. And Tuesdays are days to be bold on. Well, I think they are. Okay, so another one. Let's have one that has a kind of almost cone shape. Again, I'm going to have this bowing upwards just so that I can pop some I'll have a peek of the in the back in in a back part of the mushroom the mushroom cap. I'm just going to thicken some of these lines just to give that feeling of dimension. 
And again, I'm going to take a fine pen and I am going to make an edge there. So that I can either make this a different colour or leave it white. Not quite sure yet what I'll do. And let's have some little ones at the bottom. Oh, this pen is nearly at its last gasp. So, how far up you tilt or you bend this line gives a different feeling as to how far up. Perhaps this mushroom is tilted. The more this is tilted, or you know, curved upwards, the more this one here needs to curve downwards to give it that kind of perspective. And again, I'm going to take this. And this time I'm going to give it some stripes. But I fancy doing those in the thinner pen. Right, I'm going to consign that Fidenasuki to the bin because it's frustrating me. Okay. So what about some other shapes? So just some other ones. So let's do a nice U shape here. And I'm going to create that oval shape there so it looks like a cup. And yeah, it's a bit on the wonky side, I suppose, but as I often say, life and nature is often on the wonky side. It's not perfect. And you can make them perfectly symmetrical if that's what you would like, but I just tend to go with how they appear. And again, just going to go and darken these lines left and the bottom just to make sure that I've got some variation here. Now for this one, to imagine there's a point here and the gills that radiate out from this point will curve upwards like this, perhaps. And perhaps it's where they join isn't perhaps that far down. Maybe it just may be here. But the point is just to make them curved so that you've got that feeling that this area is bending inwards and I have taken the gills right to the very edge and here I'm going to pop a couple of bands on like so and then I can draw some patterns within them and I quite like this fine pen for this I like the contrast today. It's not something that I would normally do, but it feels the right kind of thing to do today. It's all about experimenting and trying things out. This is why I use sketchbook. And I think I may just pop some more of these in here just to make that space that little bit more interesting. These need the gills on and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to try and imagine or leave a little gap between them as if there's a an edge there. I'm not going to draw it in, I'm going to let the lines suggest that there is. So that's quite fun. With this one, I'm going to do something completely different because sometimes, instead of lines, they have holes that the spores come out of. Maybe not in that shape cap, but it's something a bit different. And I think on this one here, I think I'm going to put some spots basically just towards the top of the cap. Perhaps if I can fit a couple just spilling off the edge again. So that's interesting. I'm not going to do anything to this cap because I've got dots underneath, which sounds contrary when I've put these gill lines in, but I think those dots underneath just need that little bit of emphasis. Okay, so what about Hmm. 
mushrooms that are perhaps like this in shape where you can see where the stalk joins underneath and I do like that and again I'm going to pop that edge along the edge of the cap and then I'm going to have a look at how these gills would radiate out. Well, they're going to all radiate out from the central part of this cap, as it were. I'm bending mine, but you could actually get away with them, I think, being straight with this one fairly straight lines but I think it makes sense to have these almost bowing down bowing down and so we've got that kind of shape going on here made an awkward corner here so I'm just going to use my pen just to go back and sculpt them the lines and I'm also going to go back and darken the left and the bottom. These lines. I think I've done them all. Yeah, it's that one I've missed out. So that's a bit of fun. And um, you can have other shapes of these cups shaped mushrooms, fungi. So a very steep kind of, um, you know, um, an upside down bell shape here almost. And uh, the other thing that we can do is give this stem some interest. perhaps by creating almost like um, sections as if it's grown in, in stages. I'm not sure that works. I think I've got my um, dimensions wrong for these, but it is what it is and it'll, it'll do what it needs to do for now. And again, I'm going to pop that there. And I think I might just pop another fine band in the middle one at the bottom and here is where I'm going to have the lines and these lines I don't know if you can see they're more or less straight here but they're curving over at the end gives that feeling that the, perhaps the top of this is flatter than, than it appears. This one appears to be concave as if it would be carried up, they would come up to the top and meet. This one feels like these are actually bending over somewhat. So the direction of line, or the shape of the line you use, can very much influence how things appear. And I like that, I do. So let's go for something that is very much tilted away from us. So we wouldn't see very much of the cap, but we'd see enough of it to know there's some there. So I've drawn it quite narrow as if the cap isn't, it's not domed like this. It's, I suppose it's flatter like this, but I am going to still do my, I have done it on that one. In fact, I want to come back to the one I've just done. This is the bottom side here. So it's a funny one to add thickness of line to with these. A bit heavy handed with them. And I think I'd want to just perhaps add some lines underneath these to suggest shadow there 
and I'm going to do the same on some of the others where I can fit the lines in. If I can't fit the lines in, I'm not going to worry too much. And um, perhaps some, you know, just to suggest some texture on the stem. You can add a fair amount of that if you want. It's up to you how much you add, but I. I've got a feeling that is just about the right amount here. It's just a bit there. Okay, the gills. I'm going to bend these out like this. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm bending them out from the centre and then this is getting interesting because I'm getting myself confused here I've got a bit too far around the edges really but it'll be fine because I can I can split some of these larger spaces up by branching the gills or putting little patterns in them like this and perhaps a branch just to disorganise, randomise, I don't know, um, vary the appearance of the gills and the spaces between them which I think makes it look that much more natural as well. Also using a fine pen means you can get a lot more of these lines in, which is great. So it's fun. Okay. This would be a completely different point of view of them. And I am going to do one of these, kind of, but from above. So my, my central point would say be here. And I'll pop that in now, but I want my stem to come from there. Downwards. And to make this, I suppose to make this attach to this or to, to feel like it belongs to this, it's a question of how you add colour. So for this one, I am going to give this an edge here. And then I've put the dot in where I want the mushroom to be. And I'm just going to start by adding where the lines would be straightest and then perhaps where we'd have quite a bend in them. just to keep me on the straight and narrow as it were and then it's a question of filling these areas in with these lovely bendy lines the paper I'm working on is Canson's um, Imagine mixed media paper which I really do quite like um, it works well enough for me with water-based things. I am not um, brilliant with watercolour, I have to say. Um, I'm not actually brilliant with anything much that's water-based. I think my superpower when it comes to adding colour and shadow is more digitally. And I do that as if I was using traditional media. It's just I really struggle with traditional media. So we've got that one. I think I'd like to add a couple more. And perhaps um, we think about some different shapes. So this one here is quite chunky and blocky. And I've drawn the lines a bit uneven deliberately and uh, 
I think this one would have a stem that starts quite chunky and narrows down and then becomes chunkier again. I think that would work. And then for this one, instead of rounds, I'm going to put quite angular shapes in. I think I'm going to have them getting a little bit smaller as we go to one side. And I'm also going to put shadows on the left and bottom of these as if they've got some volume. So they stand up from the surface of the mushroom, from the mushroom cap. So. And then let's do another one up here. Very strange shape, but I'm, I'm happy with strange shapes. So I am going to wobble those lines a little bit. And let's do some of these shapes again. This is where drawing the shape of the mushroom in, in black first, rather than pencil, can be a disadvantage where you've got shapes over, overhanging, or you know, going round behind the edge, if you're going to add dimension to them which is what I'm going to try to do now. But in the last example, where I added these black lines gave the feeling that they're sticking up. For these ones, if I put the shadows at the top and to the right, I've got an untidy line, I can just alter the shape of this somewhat just to tidy it all up and this is where the problem is because I'd really love to have this dipping inwards but it is what it is for now there's nothing that says as they're whimsical they don't have to be realistic just that impression that this is what's happening Whimsical is my default setting. I didn't realise there was such a thing for many a long year. Whimsical and stylized. So I don't know if you can see that these look like they're sticking upwards and those look like they're... It's like a really bad case of Swiss cheese. I mean, if you wanted to give an impression that perhaps the holes go all the way through or they, that it's hollow, you can actually do holes behind holes, but I'm not going to do that. Um, trying to think for a moment because I do this uh, as I'm thinking because I do think on the fly I very rarely plan my videos out if ever because I just have an idea that I'm going to go with and I'm going to see what if what happens if we do this what happens if we do that and um, I, I've worked out over the time I've been doing Um, videos and so on or arts as well is that the more that I plan things out <laughs> the less happy I am with the result it always seems to go to pot so the only time I would sort of plan a video out is if I'd done a drawing that I was happy with um, and that I wanted to show you how you too could do that not with all my art, because some of my art, it takes me hours to draw. Hours and hours and hours. But I can show you the elements, how to draw the elements of things. So there's a different shaped one again. I'm just going to put that dip in there. 
and perhaps one that going to have the stem here. Now this is going to be interesting to see how I get this stem to go down behind these. And I think it would actually finish off somewhere behind these so I'm not going to do anything else with it but I am going to pop all of this in. And again while I'm here I'm just going to add that darkness. It does feel very heavy handed, but it, I think it ends up that it feels more like um, a wood cut or a lino cut, which have very bold lines in them. much bolder than you'd use with pen. Etchings can be very fine, but these not so. And what I'm going to do here, and I'm so tempted to get a pencil out to do this, to make them even finer. Shall I? Yes, why not? Let's have a look here. Oh, thought I'd pick my pencil up, but I haven't. A handy dandy pencil. And I'm going to just put some pattern in in pencil because I'm going to be adding some colour to this. I'm making it kind of scaly because sometimes mushrooms do seem to have this kind of scaliness on them. It's not that they have scales, it's just that it's the texture of the surface of the cap. And yes, they're uneven. But that will show through any translucent colour and it's subtle. And that's something perhaps to consider is that we can do things that are quite subtle with pencil. The pen isn't as subtle. I can it'll be more subtle if I use a finer line. But this will do. Okay. I'm just going to collect some bits here. I've got my ink tense pencils. I've got a white Posca pen here. I need a water brush because no I'm going to go I'm going to leave filming because I know exactly where it is that I want I'm going to go and get my watercolors or a set of watercolors so I'm back and here I have my mission gold set of watercolors as you'll see very scuzzy, but they should work. And I think I'm going to be fine. So you can see them there. I'm just going to rearrange some bits on my desk so I know where things are and I can easily reach them without reaching across the camera, as I just did. Um, I can use my water brush with these because, um, because it'll work. Okay. This I know is, is the Opera Gold, or Opera Rose, I think, in the Mission Gold set. It's very, very vibrantly pink. And I'm just going to add some turquoise or peacocky blue to it, just to add some variation there. A bit more of the pink, I think. Just on the edge here. So this isn't watercolour paper, but it stands up well. And I think I work better with watercolours on paper that isn't watercolour paper, possibly. So I have got some purple here, so let's just chop some purple in. And just let this do what it wants to do. If it wants to spread out, brilliant. If it doesn't, fine. It'll do what it needs to do, and it will create a texture there. The nice thing about watercolours is that once they dry, you can glaze over them if you want to add some more colour. So here I'm adding spots of that blue and just letting it mix with the pink to create purple. I added purple as well, so and perhaps I'll just add some more pinks in here. Just little bits of it. And then I need to leave it to dry. 
so this colour should spread one into the other somewhat. Maybe not as much as I'd like it to because it's um we go, tissue. I have tissue. Woohoo. Oh, uh, it's, it's not watercolour paper, but I think it could be quite interesting. Okay, let me have a look here. I've got this here, so I'm going to do some green here. It's pretty yucky green, but it's fine because I'll be able to add other colours to it. And and see how it works with the brighter green colour in. We'll take some of that off. we go so we've got that brighter yellowy green coming through there just playing with color there's something lovely about playing with color even though I'm really not very good at it but it's still fascinating to me how this just works oh that's the color I wanted I think so let's just pop some of this in I have no idea what the names of these colours are generally. This looks like a viridian green. But it could be any other sort of, you know, really bright, deep, you know, dark, bright green green. Whereas the, the yellow one I was using, or yellowish green I was using, is distinctly a yellowy colour. But I want more of that in there. And then together they will all create some interest here. The colours look very vibrant when they're wet and this is the most frustrating thing I find about watercolour is that if you want a really vibrant colour when they dry you have to add lots of colour and it, fr and it does frustrate me somewhat because I think oh no I've got to go back in and add more. So this is a kind of um, sort of like a um, burnt umber I suppose or um, sienna but to that I'm going to add some red try and keep that sienna in the corner and um, I want some orange I think I'll go with this one there are so many different oranges in this set I've got no idea which is which I'll just go with them go with the flow it's easy I know there's going to be comments about if you want to use watercolour well use proper watercolour paper and I do have lots of really you know 100% cotton paper and so on but I find I'm equally as bad with that as I as perhaps as I am with this if anything I'm better with this kind of paper and I don't understand it myself I guess this this kind of paper does what I want it to do and whatever that may be. Oh, I am going over the tops of these circles here and along the edge. That's fine because, come on, let's get some water. I can add water in this to bleach these out a bit. So I, if I want to add more colour there, I can. I'm going to do this now while it's all wet. So I'm picking up with the tissue any of the excess and then I can go back and add, well, I'm going to add an orangey colour, the bottom here, just for interest and shadow and what have you. Just for some interest and just move that up a bit. Don't mind the blotchiness. Perhaps a bit of, uh, oh, that's a very bright colour. It's bright ready colour, I think. Which will just be of an interest there. Perhaps a bit of this one as well. Just spotting it in. And just letting the spots do what they want to do. I may end up with something that's absolutely hideous afterwards, or I may not. I don't know is the honest answer. Okay, a um, couple of others as I'm going to oh, get colour here. I 
Now with these I could go over these with the colour and then bleach it out but if I want these to be quite bright white I need to leave them without the colour on so I'm just going around. I'm not going to spend all the time here um, now doing all of these. I'm just going to do a couple so we can have a look at perhaps things that I do or things that will perhaps give you some more confidence in using things like watercolour. Um, I don't do what other people do I guess or perhaps I do I just don't realise it. I say this often is that there are lots of people who will tell you what you should and shouldn't do and I guess there are things you shouldn't do you know learning about what colours mix well together and what colours will make mud um, and so on and understanding what the techniques are that you can use when you're mixing colours um, and how to lift colour and you know darken colour and create texture and so on but ultimately I think we learn by doing and trying things out and if it doesn't work the way we want it to is try something else and see how we get that and see if we can replicate that kind of effect. Watercolour is can be both predictable and unpredictable and I'm the one who gets it who, who finds it so unpredictable. I think I just have to learn how to work with it. So I'm, I'm dabbing in here just little bits of darker colour, the darker red in places, just to give that difference and perhaps some texture and so on. And I will smooth it out a little bit in places because this this is almost dried here and I don't want it too blotchy and blobby. Although it's quite cute when it's blotchy and blobby. Depends what you want, I suppose. Just going to wipe some of my brush off, give it a squeeze to get some more water flowing. And I do find I'm a lot more successful with water brushes than I am with traditional brushes. It's that constant flow of water, I think, that makes the difference for me. So I am going to, in this while it's still just a bit damp, just pop in some dots of water here and there and see if we can get some more dottiness going on. And that's interesting. I think the stems are underneath. I'm going to use some complementary colours. And my favourite colour of all, I think, is this one. One of my favourite colours is something about this lovely deep rich blue here. And I love working with complementary colours. They make the colours they're next to shine so brightly or glow, look much brighter than they are. Or in this case, bring out how dull and uninspiring bits are. But I can also go and add um, darker colour. I'm adding some, in, I think it's indigo. No, it's not indigo, it's Prussian blue. Here to that turquoisey colour. So I've got a darker colour right up close or inside that in here, you know, adding to that suggestion that no light's getting there or little light, which is fun. And I think for this one, the, the one next door, I'm going to add this green. I've got no idea what this green is called, but it's a nice green. I could look it up if I could go and find my box. It'll take me forever to work out what they are though. This is getting an interesting one. It's almost like I've, I'm beginning to get sections that appear above um, others. It's like the, you've got a layer of on top of another and where it's broken away or peeled back in some way. Very strange looking. I don't think the camera necessarily picks that up even though I've got the light on and everything else. Um, my light in here is much brighter than it appears on my camera for some strange reason. I've got no idea why that is. Might be the settings of my computer screen. So, okay, let's have a look. 
Um, I'll just do this one and I think I'm going to use for that I'm going to use some red around the base I think clean my brush off squirt out some more water and then I'm going to use orange picked up way too much there because it's it's beginning to cloud over, cloud the lines and I don't want the lines to be clouded by colour, I want the black lines to shine through. It's no big deal because I can once it's dry I can always go over the top but I prefer not to have to do that to be honest. And along the base of this one I am just going to pop some yellow there and where I've overspilled colour a little bit there it, it will blend into this. Okay, this one here, I want a little bit of shadow at the bottom, the base. I am not going to use grey. I'm going to use a little bit of, I think it's an ochre colour. I just want something that gives a hint of perhaps a little bit of shadow there. And I've put too much down here, but I'm going to pick it up so I can add it to others. And I'm just going to let this do what it wants to do, really. Perhaps just add some water in just to... Ooh, I've picked up some pink there. Or red, no matter. So that's... That'll be okay. I could add a teeny bit, perhaps, of... I think this is Payne's Grey to the base of it while it's wet and just let that just do what it'll do perhaps a bit too much in some places but while it's wet you can see it just spreads out that little bit and it will fade back I know that as it dries so that almost probably work quite nicely for the stems I hate making colours up. Um, greys would work, but I think I want greys with a hint of colour. Um, I think purple would work quite nicely. So, that, but you need it very light because we want. It's not quite right, so I'm going to add just a bit of. It's, yeah, it's not perfect. This is the bit that I struggle with the most is the stem. But I think what I tend to do, let me have a look. I'm going to use some of that yellow ochre in with the grey or ochre colour, yellowy, browny ochre colour. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of purple. Purple and yellow make this ackee colour. It can make a disgusting colour but they can also make a mushroom kind of grey and you're sort of like you're not supposed to mix these colours because they make baby poop. Well yes they do in the wrong dimensions or wrong not dimensions and quantities but in the right you can get a lovely mushroomy shade. Not the best. I'm not brilliant at this. I miss my digital tools here yeah. because I know I would get these just really nicely with my Digi tools, my Digi palettes but not to me today and let's just try straight up grey on some of the others like this one so we'll want plenty of oh. I'm going to fill this with a light wash of grey and while it's dark, still damp, I'm going to dot in where I want the sh the, um, the shadows to be far more. And just dot the grey in and just let it do its job while it's all nice and damp. Because that would then be more in keeping with everything else, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course it would, Angela. I've never ever and never will claim to be an expert on watercolouring or adding colour. 
Drawing is my superpower. I add colour in a way that makes sense to me. It may not make sense to other people. And my skills with watercolour are not legend. Well, they are legend. They're legend for being not wonderful. But I persevere. I keep going and every now and again I think, well, actually, that is almost good enough. Almost. Which is an improvement on, gosh, Angela, what on earth are you thinking? For this one, I do want to dab some of the water up and remove some of the colour. And that adds texture as well. So these here. So I'm going to pop this to one side because I'm... I think the ones on this side will be dry now. Let me pop this out the way before I do something disastrous. Pop that out the way again before I do something disastrous with it. And I have a Posca paint pen here, which is likely to be a recipe for disaster for me because um, I've got to give it a good old shake. And I'm going to get it working. There we go. Now, in theory, this should not pick up any of the, um, the watercolour underneath. But it's really opaque. It dries flat, unlike the souffle pens. And I can use it just to put patterns of white dots on my mushrooms. So on the caps like that, I've gone over the black line. I can put collections on these to bring out perhaps that they were originally white or some sense they've got texture and so on there, which is what I'm going to do. Put a lot towards the top or where I think there ought to be a kind of high, high spot or highlight and not so many elsewhere and on the stems as well it can be useful to add highlights in when you're incompetent with watercolour like me I think I, I think here with the stems I think I was trying to go too pale that's my problem I forget that it all well, I don't forget that it dries back but I'm just not confident enough but I know where the highlights are okay so for this one I'm going to put a little dot in where each of these little scallops joins it ends up looking a bit like a, a net with a jewel at each intersection I suppose, even though it's, you know, they're little scallop or scale shapes. I'm going to do the same along the bottom where they touch the edge of the cap on the top here. Where they touch the edge just to finish that off. So it's like a little network of gems and jewels. This one, I like the texture that's there, but it would look a bit odd if I hadn't if I would um, if I don't do the same as I've done with the others, I suppose. So I'm just putting a row of white dots there and then I'm going to put vertical lines of them and then that texture underneath will show through it doesn't disappear completely um, this one is interesting I've, I've forgotten to go back and add color to those but I think I'm going to add some little dots underneath on this one for now and I think I'm going to pop some dots right the way along this edge between the two sections and also along this edge 
perhaps. Along here, maybe. And take your time and enjoy this. You can just pop perhaps some um, sprays of dots that come down like that. And here I'm just going to add some over in this area, which I would imagine would be lighter perhaps. And just have the dots until they're so far apart that you don't need any more. Just helps to add that little bit of a highlight. There's plenty more here to do, to add colour to and to ex experiment with and to see what happens. But this is where I'm going to leave it for today and leave you with some things to ponder. And I'm, all, I'm always happy to receive helpful advice and suggestions or point me in the direction of tutorials that could help me um, with watercolour. I can see that my stems are very dull and boring and I really need to make them a lot darker. I haven't really thought about where I, I would, you know, how I would do that, but I will work that out in time. And I might find it easier to do when I'm not trying to talk at the same time. So I'm going to say thank you very much for sticking with me. I do hope that you've enjoyed this one. You found some new interesting mushroom shapes, different things you can do, and also how to embellish these caps. I've used white, but you could use gold or silver or any other colour you like, black even, and um, so many other ways of adding colour. It doesn't have to be like this. Um, I'm <laughs> Coloured pencils frustrate me because I, it's so slow, because the layers I need to build up and my, my fingers, the arthritis in my fingers doesn't like them very much. Um, watercolours I like. Marker pens I think might have been a good idea for me. Um, in fact, they definitely would have, uh, but this paper doesn't take marker pens, alcohol markers. Um, but it's fun to experiment with different media. It's sketchbook work. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's about learning. It's about trying things out, having a go, seeing what happens, stepping back and going, right, this hasn't worked. Why hasn't it worked? It's because I haven't used a great enough intensity of colour. If I had a background colour, if I'd worked on, or if I'm able to put a background behind this, these greys may work. But I also haven't worked with watercolour in the stems the way I have in the caps, by letting colours flow one into another and creating a texture that's almost unpredictable. I say almost. You get an idea, but it is what it is and you have to work with, with what, what's there, I suppose. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please give a thumbs up. If you've subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. At the moment, I'm releasing videos just about every day, but I think I'm going to have to think about, I, I, I've said this often, is perhaps every other day in the week and when at the weekend. The thing is, I end up doing one every day because I start my day off with drawing for fun and I end my day with drawing for fun and any work I need to do, I try to fit in in the middle. Um, so I'm just going to say thank you very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and find time to be creative. Bye. Hoyle.